Shalom, shalom, this is Kapali, a.k.a. Pops, out of GMS Chicago, with another sit-down. Before I get started, though, like always, I want to send all praises, honor, and glory out to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Akakwadash, to the apostles and elders of GMS out of New York, the elder bishops out of Connecticut and the apostle down in Texas. I want to send double honors because they do real well for the uh, brethren around the world pushing this truth on cut out filtered, giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly of the scriptures, correctly breaking down the prophecies and the interaction with the people on the planet, declaring, declaring war on it. Uh, I want to send salutations for the aqua, the few and the true that's listening to say the charity keep doing so. But for the squad of scoff for reprobate two third Israelites and 17 other nations who are in the midst of Jacob's trouble and in the black horse, it is going to get a whole lot worse. Anyway, just got a little bit of read here in Psalms I want to go through. And, uh, for, uh, you know, balance, we call it that, okay? This is Psalms 78 and 40. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted Yahweh and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy, how he, how he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zon, and had turned their rivers into blood and their floods that they could not drink. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their increase into the caterpillar and their labor unto the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hail and their flocks to the hot thunderbolts. The Lord don't do miracles. Who can fix their mouth to say that? Scripture says that the Lord not only did miracles, that all the miracles of Yahweh shy was so much that the book couldn't contain it. So, why are people saying these things? They have, they have no hope. They have no vision. They have, they have nothing to draw on. And this is the two thirds this time around. Because the elect believe all these things. The elect believe the word of the Lord. Their faith is going to be tried and tested. But their hope is going to show itself. Okay. Read some more. He cast, 49, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He made a way to he made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. And smote the firstborn of Egypt, the chief of their strength in the tabernacles of Ham.
But we but we've got people here saying now that the Lord don't isn't doing miracles. So who are these people that feel the need to come up and speak these blasphemies against Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah? What purpose does it serve? These are the same people that are hooked to Egypt in these days, which are going to be these people. Let's see. Zechariah 13, 8, 9. It shall come to pass that in all the land, says Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. All of the elect is looking and hoping to be part of this one third. The men that are out there standing on the corners doing the work are hoping to be part of the 144,000. Nine, I will bring the third part through the fire and we'll find them as silver is refined. I can see that happening now. As this black horse and these types of things happen. You know, one of the brothers that is um, here in Chicago has been a blessing um, on that level. Basically said that he said he's haven't seen as many brothers collectively in dire straits financially as, he's, as he has seen here now. In the entire time that he's been in the truth. Yeah. True. Okay. I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say Yahweh is my power. And Yahweh Shah is my savior. The last part was speaking as a man, but keeping it 100 and being real about it. Because I can't, I can't go directly to Yahweh. I have to go through Yahweh Shah. So he is my savior. He, was, he, was, he did lay his life down. He did shed his blood for, for the remission of sin for the hopeful elect. And absolutely, I'm dependent upon his mercy. Because as Paul said, the things I would do, I don't. And the things I wouldn't do are the things that I do. Do sin abound? No. But if you're breaking, if you're broken one sin, you've broken them all. And I can't live sinless. Day to day, I can't. I can't wear a hundred percent fabric, a particular fabric, a hundred percent, toe to toe, foot to toe, or head to toe. Any day of the week here in America, so I've broken a, I've, I've broken a commandment. May not be adultery, and these things. But it's still a commandment. I say these things because of the fact that, like I said, these scriptures are precious. And applying them is, is, is fundamentally sound to your salvation. You can't have it without it. But... 
we know here in Peter 3 and 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. They have no vision. How can you see all the things that you see and not know? Look at the state of the world. It's hard not to be occupied in prophecy. The scripture says to be, if you're going to be in anything, be in prophecy. But it's hard not to be. If you're trying to do any of the work of your Hawabash and Hawashah, it's hard not to be in a prophecy. How can you not be? How can you not be in the prophecies when you're seeing what you're seeing? Okay. If you, if you don't recognize it, then it's only because you're not in the book. The, verse 3, knowing this first that there shall be, uh, there shall be, there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of Yahweh the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished flooded the earth Noah prophesied told him that it was coming seven but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word I kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So if you join to this Edomite, the son of perdition, you're going to catch the destruction. That's that's slated for him as well. So why are these people saying that there are no miracles? Um, what they used to call UF UFOs are now uh, being called aerial phenomenons identified unidentified aerial phenomenons the chariots have shown up so much now that they got to deal with them because they know that they're coming and Esau's got to put something out there because if not then it'd be like he didn't know anything was coming and he's got to be able to say he knew. And he warned the world. Trying to make Yahweh shy the, the boogeyman. He is the boogeyman. Didn't it say that he, the earth was flooded? Didn't it say that, that, that the firstborns of Egypt were struck down? The harbinger of death, the angel of death, the death angel rolled through Egypt and struck down the firstborn in every house. So why does the scripture say that then? Why does the scripture say uh, the day of the Lord is gloom? Well, as a matter of fact, let me get that.
Nope, that isn't where I want to go either. Give me one second. Okay, I was. Just wrong one. Joel 2 and 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound alarm in my holy mountain. Let the, all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong they have not been, even the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord is going to be a day of gloominess, darkness. Okay. A day of gloominess, a day of darkness. Amos 5 and 18, War unto you that desire the day of Yahweh. To what end is it for you the day of Yahweh is darkness and not light? As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of Yahweh be darkness and not light, even very dark and not brightness in it? So you want the Lord to show up. You sure? You said that he's not doing miracles. We gonna need miracles in this day. The, the hopeful elect is gonna be looking for miracles in this day. So if you're a person saying that, that, that the Lord didn't do miracles, that your house shot didn't do miracles, then how are we supposed to get through this? Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But we know it's there because we see everything else. All the turmoil, troubles that's on, in, on the planet, how can we not, as the hopeful elect, Trust your Howard Bashim Howard Shah and the words. The words are telling us what's happening. Occupied in prophecy health. 90% of the 90% of my sit downs is just reporting the news of what I see on the planet at this point. If you're in the camp and they not teaching you what the MOTB is or the CHIP, they're not giving you definitive answers on that. Right now, you need to jettison. Look up that word, see what it means. You need to jettison that camp. Jettison. Throw or drop something from an aircraft or ship. Your body is a ship, it's a vessel. Six aircraft jettison their loads in the sea. The action of jettison something, the jettison lever. Jettison, drop something. If you're in a camp and they're not telling you what the MOTB, the CHIP is, they're not telling you that they believe in miracles and things of this nature. They're not giving you or telling you the, the absolute Hebrew name 
of the Father and the Son. You need to kick rocks. You need to tell that camp to kick rocks and find somebody that's going to give you the truth. Because this shit has become crunch time here. Like I said, you know, I went into the store a couple weeks ago and what would normally cost me about 50 bucks or so was doubled. It was $100 spent quick on, on some bags of shit that I was able to carry in and basically with, with a book bag on my, on my back, a heavy book bag on my back. My father gave $100 to my cousins years ago, and that was damn near enough food for a month. $100 was, a, was about four bags worth of plastic bags of stuff. It wasn't that much. I say that because, like I said, if y'all don't have the real understanding as to what's going on, y'all don't have the name of the father and the son, and y'all don't believe in miracles, you don't have the right vision. And it's going to come up short in the end. So, what it says, what does the scripture say? I don't want to word this. See if I can plug it in this way to come up. There it goes, sure did. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? That prophecy of looking down upon the on the lake of fire. That's going to be a miracle. If you, if you haven't figured it out or your camp isn't telling you how that miracle is going to be obtained. You, you've got a problem. If you don't have the right name of the father and the son. You don't have, you don't even have a, a opening ticket to even get on the, 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 the carrier, the chariot, to allow you to even be able to see that site. So you go either be in one or two places, either you go be able to look at that site or you go be in the calamity of that site here in America. No more, no more gray areas, boys. No more gray areas. What Job say? Though he slay me, I put my trust in you. How about Shema was shy? You don't know that name. And the and the doctrine that comes with it, the hundred percent. Because there's going to be people that's going to be saying Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, but they're not going to have the correct doctrine that goes with it. The correct faith that powers it. I'm going to leave it there at that. So again, I want to send all praises, honor, and glory out to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, and Kagwadash. To the apostles and elders of GMS out of New York, I send double honors because they do well. The elder bishops out of Connecticut, the apostle down in Texas. Brethren around the world, push this truth uncut on filter, giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly of the scriptures, correctly break it down. These prophecies and the interaction with the people on the planet. Declaring war on it again, salutations. Hopefully, elect. Like I hope that's edifying, uplifting to know that if you've got those things that I spoke of, you could possibly part, be part of the elect. 
But for the scorners call for reprobate two there is a license seventeen other nations who are in the midst of Jacob's trouble and this black horse and don't understand it. You're going to be hooked to Esau in this system and this kingdom, and guess what? Esau and the seventeen and the, Esau and the sixteen other nations who are going to be missed, missed in the mix of that. To you all, the barber ball. ball.